say thank you. Lord, as we hear your word, we pray that your word will have a place in our hearts. That you will speak to us as only you can do, O oh God. That you may be glorified in Jesus' name. And if you are believing, shout the loudest, amen. amen. Let's read the Bible in the book of Joshua as we are standing, chapter 1. And from verse 1 to verse 9. This is our month of moving forward in the year of unstoppable progress. We are still progressing. I am waiting to see what God will do in 2024. But I am sure after progress, something bigger is coming. I, I, I. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' servant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan. You and all these people to the land which I'm giving to them, the children of Israel. Verse 3. Every place that the sole of your foot will trend upon, I have given you as I said to Moses. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites and to the great sea towards the going down of the sun shall be your territory. No man, can we all read together here? No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Verse 6. Be strong and of good courage. For to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong, very courageous, that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left. Verse 8. This book of the law. Verse 9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid. Nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. That is the word of the Lord. We may take our seat in the presence of God. I will pray, I will pray. Ooh. Father, we give you praise. I don't want to sing because if I sing, I won't teach. But according to the word that we have read today, is a charge that was given to Joshua by God himself. God told Joshua, now that I am taking away Moses, this is what I am charging you to do. Because there is an assignment that God has for every generation. You are not just here because you are supposed to be counted in the census. You are not just here because your father and mother prayed for a child and you were born. You are not just here because it is natural. Every child and everybody that is born into this life, you have an assignment. Somebody say, I have an assignment. But most of the times, we tend to think that our assignments are independent of each other. As we have uh, I've talked to the new believers here according to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. We are one body, but there are many members in that body. Each one of us requires the other to coexist. We cannot live alone as an island. So God had appointed Joshua to be a servant to Moses. The Bible is saying that Joshua, the son of Nun, was the servant of Moses. If I was to ask you, who are you under? Who are you serving? Not just being called with. Not just being identified with. Who are you serving? Because whoever you are serving is the one that will give you an inheritance. God did not look further from who was serving Moses. When God wanted somebody to lead the children of Israel, he would have gone and anointed somebody in the camp. But he looked for Joshua, the faithful servant that was serving behind Moses. Why did Joshua qualify? 
Because Joshua went beyond the human qualifications of Moses and saw a greater assignment and agenda that God had for Moses to fulfill in commanding and letting the children of Israel go and possess their inheritance. Each one of us has an inheritance. The issue is, are we going to possess or we are going to die in the wilderness? That is the question of whether are you willing to move forward? Ask your neighbor for me, are you willing to move forward? Ask them for me, are you willing to move forward? It doesn't mean that God has told you move forward, that everything will be convenient. No. He was told that where you are going, I am giving you the wilderness. I am giving you all this vast land. But it requires courage. For you to take what God has in store for you, it requires courage. Why do you need courage? Because the people you are going to dispossess are going to put up a fight. But I cannot tell you the word of God has gone ahead of you, that you are more than a conqueror. In Arabo Shata Bagada Zabagata even if the enemy has decided that what God has promised you is not entering your hand God is telling you courageously pursue and you shall overtake every, everything. I came to bring to you and to charge you that in the name of Jesus you have an inheritance in God you have an inheritance in this land. All you need is a rise in courage and take possession of it. Your inheritance shall not go to your enemies. Your inheritance shall not go to your neighbor. Your inheritance shall not remain untapped. The next generation will enjoy from it. If you are in agreement, shout the loudest amen. Somebody say I refuse to die in the wilderness. Sound like you believe it. God already forewarned Joshua that the assignment I'm giving you is not simple. Because if this assignment made Moses die, for that assignment, Moses was not able to reach Canaan because the people he was leading were not easy. And for that reason, for some reason, Moses was distracted by the people because the enemy will not use anybody that is far from you to distract you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The enemy will not use anybody that is far from you to distract you. He will use the very people that are within your circle to distract you. And what the enemy is interested in is not just your well-being. It is the eternal inheritance that God has for us. You will not miss heaven. You will not miss heaven. Somebody say, I will not miss heaven. And the detractors were not far from Moses. That is why only Joshua qualified and Caleb. Because the rest of the people were moving with Moses, but they never believed in what Moses was saying. It is possible to lead the word of God, be Holy Ghost baptized, but never ever have a spiritual fertilization into the word of God so that you may bear fruit. I refuse to be part of that. I want to receive the word that will make me get my inheritance. So because this is a family Sunday, I want to teach us about things that are in the family that hinder us from moving forward. Because it is a requirement of God that we move forward. To move forward is to make progress. To move forward is to be consistent in growth. To move forward it means that you are taking steps to the right direction. Or towards the goal that you have. So what are some of the things that hinder us? Moses already explained to Joshua that the people that you are going to meet and he made Joshua and Caleb see the land first. God will always allow you to see the size of your enemies. Tell them, but God will always allow you to see the size of your enemies. Tell them, but how you interpret the size of your enemy is according to your depth in God. Kuna mutu walipatana na mulima kama wako badala ya kushindwa akawushinda. Because what you know about God is what sustains you in the day of trouble or in the day where there are obstacles. There were 12 of them. They all went and saw giants. But two of them did not see giants. They saw the ability of their God. They said they saw the land is good, but they are giants. But we are well able. But we are well able. But we are well able. But we are well able because greater is he that is in us than the one that is in the world. So what are the things that hinders families from moving forward. I will begin from uh, point number one. Number one, it is dishonor. 
It's something I've taught last month, but I felt the Lord charged me to teach it again. The seed of dishonor. Anytime a seed of dishonor is sold in the family, what happens is that there will be no longevity of blessing. And dishonor comes in many shapes and forms. It may come in rebellion. It may come as an attitude. We actually said last time that dishonor is an attitude of unworthiness. For you to dishonor somebody, you must feel like they are not worthy. You must feel like they don't deserve. Tap your neighbor for me and tell them any power programmed in your family to hinder you from receiving your inheritance. Let that power die. Lift your voice and say anti-prosperity power. Working against my life. Die in the name of Jesus. Lift your voice and say any sleep program against me today that I may not hear the word of God. I scatter you. I scatter you. Now open your mouth and say, My soul, my spirit, my body, arise, arise, arise. Celebrate your arising in Jesus' name. Anytime is a family deliverance, I know what happens. Those who carry witchcraft spirits become restless and they program sleep. May you not sleep today. May you not sleep today. Tell your neighbor, may you not sleep today. The enemy knows that when we gather as a family and God releases deliverance, it is not only you that will be delivered. Four generations to come, they will be delivered. That is why you will make sure that a family is standing. You will be coming when you are not prepared. Somebody say, any power in my father's house, any power in my mother's house that does not want me to be delivered, die in the name of Jesus. Hey, hey, in Jesus' name do we pray. I never see people sleeping when it's an, it's an anointing service. But every time we teach on family and deliverance, that is when I see people with witchcraft spirits becoming restless. That is when I see people who want to sleep sleeping. Tell you, but if you want to sleep, good night. Let me tell you, in five generations to come, there will be a difference. They were all of them in the wilderness for 40 years, but only two families made it. Mine must make it. Mine must make it. I must not be found asleep when the Lord is delivering families. Any seed of dishonor in your family, I command that seed to dry up. And people who carry a seed of dishonor, even when they go to their workplace, they can't honor their bosses. They are the people who argue with authorities. Anybody who carries a seed of dishonor, even when they come to church, they become a problem. They are always attacking ministers, always attacking the pastor, always saying, I don't like leadership. Because when there is a seed of dishonor, you attack the authorities that God has placed. May you never be found on the wrong side of authority. Whatever you honor blesses you. Hard! Any seed of dishonor in your bones, let it die in the name of Jesus! Sit down. Anytime there is, there is dishonor, you will find competition. Competition always drives where there is dishonor. Why do I say so? In Genesis chapter 35, verse 22, we see the greatest competitor I've never seen in the man of God, Reuben. Reuben despised his father to an extent that he went and took his concubine. When he took his concubine, he slept with the concubine. Hmm. And after he did that, that is why there is no tribe of Reuben. You will never see among the pillars of Israel, Reuben is not there. His name was removed. Anytime you walk in dishonor, your, the family name can be deleted from greatness. Are we communicating? And even when Moses was dividing spoil, and uh, no, Joshua was dividing the property as was shared by Moses. We find that the tribe of Reuben, the men were too few. There were no able men to fight. All the tribes of Israel had to be called to help Reuben. May you never be part of fundraisings because your family is too small to pay your medical bill. Are you communicating? Anytime there is a seed of dishonor, what happens is that your, your strength becomes weakness. When Reuben dishonored his father, his family did not only become few, they lost all their fighting men. 
the real Benites did not have an army to help them fight. They had to call all Israel. And it was only after the intervention of Moses, where Moses said, that let Reuben live and let his men not be few. You have a way out in the house of God. But if you dishonor the house of God, there is nothing left for you. There will be no savior. I always tell people that a, a curse has cycles. So when it reaches the fifth generation and nobody has repented, it enters into a level whereby the whole family is wiped off. You find that there are families that were there, but there is nobody who exists. A seed can be removed from the earth. When you see sudden deaths happening in families, and it seems not to be stoppable, you are dealing with a seed of dishonor. Because dishonor, what does dishonor do? There will be no long life. And there will be discontinuity of blessings. Any seed of honor you sow, you are sowing to longevity. Oh my God. And when I talk about honor, I am not talking about just saying I honor you. Honor is an attitude. Tell your neighbor for me, honor is an attitude. You cannot honor God if you don't honor men. You cannot honor the body that God has given you if you don't honor yourself. Because honoring others begins from honoring yourself. When you have an attitude of value, there are things you don't do. Not because somebody is watching, but because you carry yourself seriously. Hmm. Are we communicating? Ambia jirani yako tunza heshima yako. Tunza heshima yako. Ebu mpatia efa, muambia tunza heshima yako. In this era of social media, my goodness, I've seen stories. I've seen stories of people. There is one story that caught my attention of a lady that had gone to one of these um, Kikuyu TikTokers, or I think uh, social media influencers, and was crying that I am sending a message to my father on me and behalf of my sisters, and I'm begging that my father may forgive us. And then she was being asked, what do you do? And why are you using this forum to say sorry to your father? Because my father said I should never set my eyes on him. She was asked, what did you do? I beat up my father. Me and my sisters. And she was asked, why? Because my father was beating my mom. So we joined up and we were beating my father. And my father was drinking. And the father cast them. Because... <laughs> When you carry an attitude of honor, unabaki, vita zako, unabaki zikuwe zako, sawenyewe, unachana nazo. Ambia jirani yako, kama unajieshimu, wachana na vita sawenyewe. That was the battle of the mother. If the mother was so angry, she should have left. I always tell children, ukiona wazazi wako wanapigana, usijingize kwa hiyo vita. Don't take sides, you are foolish. Chenye wanauliza naga huju. Na kama ni mubaya hivyo anasema mbona hatoki. Legui. Lakini yako. What the enemy is doing, he uses women. And women are dangerous. The devil can use women to bring a generational curse. Because of our influence. I pray that every woman here, you will be wise. Rakazabaga, dabohosha, tabaga. I pray that there will be a dose of wisdom. In every woman here. That did not end there. A man called Absalom. If you read in 1 Chronicles chapter 5. Absalom wanted to take over the seat of his father. He wanted to rule over Israel. So Ahithophel, the chief advisor who dishonored David. He went and advised him that the best way you can do so that people can fear you. Go and take one of your father's concubines. And don't sleep with the concubine in the closet. Go to the rooftop and sleep with the concubine. Do you understand such dishonor? Hmm. It looks weird, but some of us do us things. It looks weird. You say, oh, It is only that there is no camera and nothing is registered. And he said, when the people hear what you have done with your father's concubine, they will hurry behind you because they will think you are fearless. Because anytime there is dishonor, there is an audacity that comes with demons. Ubravado, washetani. Imagine ubravado. You know, intima, sexual intimacy is supposed to happen in private. For you to not only, like, how did Absalom convince the concubine of his father? They sleep on the rooftop. Nanda KICC. 
Unaita kila mtu, the whole of Israel, come and see. What he was doing, he was erecting an altar of dishonor. Because no altar of honor is elected by sexual immorality. Anytime you dishonor your body by prostituting or by sleeping against the will of God, what happens is that you are a walking altar of dishonor. Are we communicating? That is why I don't even need to know when a young girl is living an unholy life. They become dishonorable. Even when you're interacting with them, you, you can sense it. You don't need to be told. How, how even teachers, those who teach, they can bear witness. Kasiana kakianza kuchanuka, unalia raizingi. Mrs. Ketawa, am I speaking the truth? Kuna venye kana kuangaliaga na confidence, like I know what you guys do. It's true. It's not hard to tell dishonor, because dishonor is a mobile altar. So anytime you see somebody carrying dishonor, though they are, know they are an accident waiting to happen, I pray that there will be no attitude of dishonor in you. And I want you to know that it's a choice you make every day. There are many parents that were dishonored in secret. And in their secret chambers, they cast a generation. Nobody knew it. They went with the curse. And I told you last time that even in a seed of dishonor, even if the parent blesses, it is the responsibility of God to protect the offices he has elected. So anytime you sow dishonor, it is no longer even the parent who curses you. If the parent only enforces what heaven is saying. Hello? But anytime you sow a seed of dishonor, it not only haunts you, it, disowns, it haunts generations after you. So why are families not moving forward? I will go to the next one, which is curses, spoken words. Spoken words or curses. There are many words and and, and negative words that are spoken either by parents or by siblings or by people around you. And once they are spoken, you carry them with you. <laughs> if you're young and you meet an auntie that you look up to and they tell you you will never succeed, that one hurts more than all the stripings of a friend. Am I speaking the truth? Or you go to a place, uh, maybe an uncle, when you're in need, you don't have school fees. And you tell them to give you school fees. And they tell you, you can go get married or you can go and sleep with men to go get school fees. I've had people who share those stories. It hurts than nothing else. And some of us are crippled on the inside because of words of curses that were spoken. But today we want to set ourselves free. I can't hear your amen. If you earned it, you are going to ask God to forgive you. But if you did not earn it, you are going to say, I disown it. Lift up your right hand and say, every word spoken against me and my generation by people in my family, by the blood of Jesus, I erase the memory. I erase the effect of those words in the name of Jesus. Every demonic spirit that is enforcing negative words that were spoken against me I bind you I paralyze your operations open your mouth and bind the demons in charge of negative words name. Every parent here, be careful what you say in anger. Be careful. Because there are demons that hang around authorities so that they can collect curses and they may use them against you in future. That is why the Bible says that a good name is better than silver or gold. There are people in my life it was told to recommend. I will recommend them 110%. But there are others, if I was told to recommend, I will say, please look for another person. Because 
what happens is that God places authorities, especially of parents, in our lives so that they can endorse us to the next level. So if a parent is bitter for whatever reason, and as a child you make mistakes, the enemy will use their tongue to curse your life. I pray that in the name of Jesus, you will not be paralyzed by words of curses. I can't hear you. In Deuteronomy 33, Moses said, and this is a blessing where Moses, the man of God, blessed the children of Israel before his death. And he said, uh, let me move from to that to go to, um, and, the bless, and this is the blessing of Judah. And he said, hear, the law, hear, O Lord, the voice of Judah, and bring him unto his people. Let his hands be sufficient for him. Be thou an help to him from his enemies. If you remember what Judah would later do, Judah needed this blessing. That is why God is blessing you in advance. I came as a Moses to proclaim a blessing. I came as a Moses to proclaim the blessing. Judah was told, hear, O oh Lord, the voice of Judah, and let him bring him to his people. Let his hand be sufficient for him. May, he, may you be a help against his enemies. If you trace the, the genealogy of Judah, it is from where Jesus comes from. If Judah was not blessed by Moses, you know what Judah did? You know what Judah did? Judah even slept with a prostitute. Judah did many things. But because of the blessing that had already gone before him, Judah was preserved. You don't know who God is eyeing in your generation. That is why you need the blessing over your head. I pray that there will be the blessing of Judah over your head. That your heart shall be sufficient for you. Let every curse be reversed over your life. If you are in agreement, shout amen. That means that Moses was saying that may Judah never be a beggar. And may he never be defeated before his enemies. He continues to say that and concerning Reuben, let Reuben live and not die. And let not his men be few. If Moses never spoke those words when they were dividing the land in the time of Joshua. I tell you, Reuben men would have all died. Because what God does, he raises an altar like this one to preserve a generation. Tell me, but you're not just seated here. You are representing your generation. That is why in such a service, I want your spirit man to be active. May you not be found asleep right now. Open your mouth and say every generation of curse. Haunting me and my generation. Be broken in the name of Jesus. Shout three times. Be broken in the name of Jesus. Two. Three. It is normally a fight and you must fight it. Because what made your forefathers stand out the way they were? It was bigger. That you're here. It means there is a grace that has carried you. And it is your time to fight for the next. You cannot uh, you know, keep blaming my forefathers. <laughs> you also have become a father. You must create another generation. I pray that there will be grace. I pray that there will be grace. I pray that there will be grace. Therefore, words carry power. You go read Deuteronomy 33. He talked about Levi was the tribe of priesthood. They had already been cast by Jacob because of killing innocent men. But Moses came and blessed. If he did not bless, there would never have been priesthood in Israel. Would you lift up your voice and say, anybody in my bloodline that is living under a curse from my forefathers or my forefathers, by your mercy, O oh God, deliver us. Deliver us. Would you cry for mercy one minute? Deliver us by your mercy. Deliver us by your mercy. Deliver us by your mercy. Open up your mouth and cry out. If you came to church, open up your mouth and cry out. Words can even limit priesthood. Words can limit the great... In Jesus' name, lift up your hand and say, any word spoken to hinder my prosperity and that of my generation, 
by the blood of Jesus, I reverse the words. I reverse the words. Open your mouth and reverse them. Nobody can do it for you. Do it for yourself. Reverse the words. You will never Everybody lift up your hands and begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. You need to ascend in the spirit. You need to ascend in Wengine wenu wazazi wenu walio kufa malisema hauta wai abudu miungu mingine Ispokuwa miungu ya miti ya mogumo na miungu ya, 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 ya ishirikina Ndiyo maana kila wakati neno linanenwa hauski Kwa sababu yo loyalty ni kwa miungu mingine But I want you to ascend in the spirit I want you to change your dimension Nobody will do it for you Nobody will do it for you Open your mouth and change your dimension Everybody let's suffer your own generation Let's suffer for your own generation the balcony I can hear you pray we believe in the baptism of the Holy Ghost and in speaking in that tongues without fear or prejudice Rekaba mama pray in the Holy Ghost, pray in the Holy Ghost. Wengine wenyu hamujapa. These are messages you only fight those battles when you are in a particular dimension. We are not here there. We are not here there. Force yourself into it. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Don't cancel curses from a human perspective. It is in the dimension you are speaking from. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Ascend in the Spirit. Ascend in the Spirit. Don't cooperate with the enemy. Fight! Israel when you grow restless, you will destroy the yoke. Go beyond how you feel. Ascend in the spirit by praying in the Holy Ghost. Ascend in the spirit, ascend in the spirit, ascend in the spirit, ascend in the spirit. As you are praying in the Holy Ghost, you are reversing curses. Curses are injunctions, curses are limitations. Dio mana ukifika kwa pesa fulani unaona umezuiliwa unashindwa shetani alijuaje kuna maneno yalinenwa kuna mipaka ya maneno iliwekwa lazima upae katika ulimwengu wa kiroho reka mama 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 ze reka kaka da baba baba badeza in jesus name do we pray When it comes to these kinds of prayers, it's not how you feel. Go beyond how you feel. Go beyond how you feel. Because most of the times when an authority speaks, an authority does not speak from this dimension. Anytime you are an authority, that is where you hear rulers in, in, of darkness in high places. Anytime you become a parent, when you speak, you no longer speak from this level. You speak from the level of rulers. That is why a parental curse is very hard to reverse. And I know what happened tonight. 
Many of you, the enemy knew what you wanted to hear. He knew what you were to hear. So he switched you off. You are going to jumpstart yourself because those curses are not broken from the realm you are in. Tell him, but change your realm, change your realm. Change your realm, change your realm. You don't change those curses in the realm most of you, I feel you are. You change it when your frequency is in the spirit. Because those utterances were not made by empty mouth. They were made by people that had authority and mantles to declare them. What are those words? They are limitations. They are injunctions. Anytime you find a successful, faithful, evil pattern in your life, there are words that have gone ahead. Because what do words do? They create laws in the spirit. You will never get money beyond here. You will never go beyond here. There are some of you, even if you apply for visas a million times, you will never get it. Because some of the predecessors, they cast the land and they use soil. You are not aware, and you are a modern day believer saying the Lord has spoken. And you've been a Pentecostal church like this one. We are praying. But because you pray from the level that they were not spoken from, you will never see results. Are we communicating? Curses are not just broken. They are broken from a dimension. Just like there is what you can declare when you're in a particular position. But there is also what you can de not declare when you're in a particular. For instance, you cannot declare Kenya is a holiday. Even if you are powerful. Who only has the power to do so? Either the minister in charge, but it must be endorsed by the president. There are laws you can't change unless you contact true power. And if you expect somebody to change it for you, I'm sorry, I can't do it for you. You have to do it for yourself. Tell him, but you have to do it for yourself. That's why everybody has their family. So for this one, nobody is praying for you. My work is only to pronounce a blessing, but who gets blessed is up to you. I want you to lift your voice and say, every curse that established a law of stagnation and delay in my generation I reverse you in Jesus' name. I wish you will become angry. If you get breakthrough in that prayer point, you will see progress you have never seen. Sometimes we think as in how long it is in the dimension we say prayer. In Jesus' name do we pray. Let me give you a practical example. When a parent is dying, those of you that have watched parents dying or you've seen it in movies, you see people hanging around them before they die waiting to hear what they will say. Do they need to pray or to be in church to speak? Do they even need to be born again to speak? Just because of who they are, they can speak a curse and it follows you. Why? Because they are already there. Unless you are seated with Christ in heavenly places, there are curses you will only massage, but never break them. I am calling you up. I am calling you up. I am calling you up. We, we can continue with gossip. We can continue with fighting in the family. Who is favored? Who has more money? Who looks like the parents favor? But let me tell you, there is no parent who can show favor if God has not blessed. Hi. Are we communicating? That is why there are fights in the families because one seems to be making it. It doesn't matter by which altar they make it. The fact that they are making it will arouse jealousy. We, you and the God you have, show us what you have. And we'll trust in your God. That is why I'm calling you to ascend. There are curses and there are laws governing your family that must be broken today. Because this is a day the Lord has made. This is when the anointing is available. If you come tomorrow, I am not in charge of God. Today is the day he has said is a day of holiday, a day of release. So if you are in agreement with the frequency in the spirit, you and your family are coming out. Lift up your voice. I want you to call the surname of your family. The family of so and so. Call the surname. Shout their name loudly in this place. Hear the word of the Lord. 
I reverse every law, every curse affecting my life. In the name of Jesus, I reverse in the, the law of poverty, the law of premature death, the law of anti marriage, the law of anti progress. Nobody will do it for you unless you do it. Do it for you and your family. If you are a family together, you are blessed. Every law governing the family of the Uri, the family of Muta, evil law governing. I reverse the law of poverty, the law of death, the law of anti marriage. Only you can do it. Wa when you gonna hear DNA? Hakuna mtu mwingine anaweza fanya. Gideon tu ndiye anaweza bomoa madhabahu ya baba yake. Hakuna mtu mwingine anaweza bomoa hiyo madhabahu. Ni Gideon tu anaweza bomoa hiyo madhabahu. I thank God for those who understand what I'm saying. In Jesus' name do we pray. Some of the words governing us are not our relatives that died and nobody even knew in their deathbed they cast anybody. We are going to, re to re reverse every law from the grave. From the grave. Tell me about anybody who died in your bloodline and left a curse of anti-progress. They must die with their curse. In the name of Jesus. Why do we have the audacity? Because now that you're in Christ Jesus, Galatians 3.13, he became a curse that we may be blessed. That is the only promise we are standing on. Otherwise, we deserve it. There is no curse that can rest on you without a cause. When you notice a consistent pattern of poverty, of death, of conflicts, in your families, you don't need to be a genius. You know there is a law that is speaking. Lift your voice and say, every law of death, speaking from the grave of my forefathers, die in the name of Jesus. I bury you in the graveyard. Maneno yaliyo semwa yanakuzuia Maneno yaliyo andikwa Erase even all written words All spoken and written words He blotted every handwriting of ordinances That was contrary to us He has redeemed us from the curse of the law Becoming a curse for us. Utangoja watu wote kwa familia yako wakufe ndiyo utanza kuomba. Utangoja mufirisike ndiyo utanza kuomba. Utalia mpaka lini. Pray there will be a change. Rina ma 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 in Jesus' name. What these curses do, uh, let me break it down. They create barriers in the mind. They are what we call strongholds. That even as you know, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. Curses everyone. Even if you hear the word of God, it never has value. Even if you're in a powerful church, it's like you're shielded from the prosperity and the revelation there. Because what curses do, they create a stronghold in the mind. There will be opportunities hanging around you, but you can't see them. Others will come and take them, but you will never use them. Because a curse creates a barrier in the mind. That's what the Bible talks about, casting down every imagination. And every high thing that exalts itself 
Yeah. And when your parents are inheritors of such altars, the words they speak to you from when you're growing up, they create strongholds. Especially if they do not plant you in God. I thank God for my mother. She planted us in God. Every day she will tell us where we are, God will take us out. So she created a possibility. But not everybody was privileged to come from a family like mine. There are others, what you had was negativity. You need to rise up and declare in the name of Jesus that every barrier that is in my mind, I pull it down. Whatever is in you that says you will forever remain poor, it must come down. Whatever that is in you that makes you celebrate sickness. Oh, I've seen people who idolize weak sickness. Even when they are not sick, it's like they feel bad. Even when you tell them they are healed, but I'm feeling pain. But there are those who know, if I know by stripes I'm healed, every time sickness comes, I reject it. But there are others, because they grew up in an environment where when you are sick, you are treated special. You embrace sickness as a way of manipulating people. We pull down every stronghold of sickness. We pull down every stronghold of, of poverty. We pull down every stronghold of rejected. Tell your neighbor, you are too sweet to be rejected. Some of us who carry a stronghold of rejection. So everywhere you are going, you are looking for attention. Everywhere you are going, you are looking, you are looking for trouble. Because you always, <laughs> about people tell me, that even wherever I go, I am rejected. It is not that you are rejected. It is because you try too hard. Tell them, but stop trying hard. You are accepted. So, una mm, katwok, una jaribu. Friendship is not by force. Hey. Have you met people like that? They want to befriend you by force. And if you not become by their, fr their friend, they say you have rejected them. Rejection is a state of the mind. Even in the place where there is a lot of love, somebody that has a mentality of rejection, they will still say they were rejected. There are people here who have shown love. My goodness, I've even was taken my time, visited them, give them money, given even some of them we took buses and went to the events. But the only the conclusion of everything, that church has no love. The problem is not people. It is the barrier that is in your head. That barrier of rejection must come down. You are favored of God. Lift your voice and say, every stronghold of rejection in my mind, I pull you down in the name of Jesus. Pull it down. Pull it down. Receive your independence in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Which leads me to the next, uh, don't sit down. This one, let me teach you two of them when you are standing. That anytime there are curses that are speaking and they create barriers in the mind, you have unhealthy interdependence. Unhealthy interdependence. Where una panda firstborn, amelea kila mtu. Amelea kila mtu. And their children suffer because everybody feels entitled to their help. And nobody tells them thank you. And it's encouraged by parents. Everybody should build their own life. Tell your neighbor, build your own life. In case your brother or your sister helped you, you are very lucky. They were never meant to help you. They were never meant to help you. In fact, in this Kenya, when you are 18, you are expected to take care of yourself. So if you are 18 and your parents are still helping you, be telling them thank you. Kuna mtu taa po other tedri, ni meta kwa bayagwa ni peta ito ya shamba. Are you mad? Unapewa taito ya wei, si utafute, kwa ni yali tafuta haje. But it's because some of us are choosy, you want the easy way. That stronghold of poverty must come down. Then, but nobody will help you help yourself. Mwambie zoea kufanya kazi na mekono yako. Emu mwambie tena zoea kufanya kazi na mekono yako. Kuna hatu wako hapa, ninaona hako na shida naenda na muintroduce kwa mtu ajiri huyu. By the time they are there one month, the terrorism, they will, they will give their employer. I regret why they are introduced there. But as as you know, you understand. And it is not because the employer has a problem. It is because you have a mentality, people owe you help. Nobody owes you anything. Nobody owes you anything. 
Sasa hiyo anasema ati juu tunapokea tithe kama kanisa tunasaidi kuwasaidia. There is no way in the Bible it is written that thou shalt open an NGO using a church. The purpose of tithing that they have been meeting my that is why if you want the church to pay for you house rent bye bye we don't pay house rent. Let me educate you we don't pay house rent. But if you are hungry even now see us after service there is food in the store. There is kuna gano kuna mchele kuna because there must be food. Praise him unapokuja practice mnapataka chakula hapa. Si tunapika. Si kila siku like he is really special. Hata mkikuja hapa ile chai na mandazi kuna chaku. Even today kuna chakula tunakula hapa. Bibi Rena sema kuwe na chakula katika nyumba ya. So as long as there is food, tika na inamie. Tell your neighbor go and work. Tell go and work. Kwa nini nasikia anointing inapanda? Mwambie na ukafanye kazi. Na kama Nairobi imekushinda usikuwe mzigo kwa watu. Hata nyahururu ni mahali. Ai kanania tea. Hakuna haja ya kujiforce ukae taona maisha imekulemea. Si ni kweli? Usikue mzigo kwa wa? That is what the Bible says. Si nimeongea ukweli? Kuna watu hapa minister Dishon, mimi I am a good pastor, but it's not the pastor in me because as a pastor I owe you nothing. It is the mother in me. There are some of my daughters I take. I introduce them to be employed. By the time I'm hearing after one month hizo nyagi kazi kama hiyo kwanza aone pastor Alex Diabosi yake akoja za kanisa na anyathe ukienda kwa kanisa hatumi bwana asifiwe kuna lugha ya kazi na kuna lugha ya kanisa kuja kwangu ujue lugha yangu ya kwangu you will not like me oh. you will not like me you will not like me ati sitakuwa naongea king james precious thou thou my beloved thou wash the utensils my precious Miji miji langu e mwa no way Ida shana ida ya kana okori ya 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 that is the language of a mother come on wake up and destroy the strongholds that have been created in our minds if i'm communicating shout yes rejection is an attitude rejection is a ati naonaga ati hanipendagi so unapendwa na huolewi sasa serious mimi ndio wapenda generally i love you all. i love you i love you i love you i love you i love hiyo imenifikisha mpaka 2030 lakini kuna watu wanataka special i should show you my phone i should show you my phone so that you understand where i'm when you are talking about the induction on conflicts that's when you know what i'm talking about Reverend I don't feel like you love me. Nyinyi mnaniambiaga. Now how am I supposed to make you feel I love you? Mwah. Because love is not felt. It is a state of the mind. Mm. He loves us whether we feel it. We don't But what the enemy will do is that he creates interdependent. You will never be emotionally dependent on anybody to feel good. Ay. Did you hear what I'm saying? You should be able to feel good by yourself. And by the time you are appearing to people, you end up before them whole. Remember, you'll never be a victim of abuse in Jesus name. Ivo unakaga nide kwa watu, hata ile macho unakaga wewe ni pede wewe. Especially when you have a relationship, men are hunters. No one can stand a kind of car love hacker. You have to give a mutu ten calls a day. Na hachukui. Are you mad? Give me a man and be the one to pick a girl. Jaya utafutwe. What is wrong with my daughters? What is wrong? What is wrong? What is? Aye, come on! Itabi ya kununuliwa wana ume gifts. Wacha na na yo my friend. Jaya ununuliwa. kubereka wanaume kahawa unywe <laughs> kuapereka kahawa hiyo it is it is it, it is <laughs> you've already created interdependency that is not healthy it shouldn't be unhealthy there should be nobody in this life that if they left your life will crash 
You will feel pain, but you still can look up to him. And let us teach our young girls. They are okay as they are. Nobody needs to validate you. And to tell you you are beautiful. Wake up in the morning and tell yourself you are beautiful. You are good. Oh my God. Ah, Everybody just look around yourself and affirm yourself. Jiambia kitu mzuri kujihusu. Nata ujiambia kitu mzuri wewe. Si mutu wakwa ujiambia. Amo yo niyo gela gia mono. Obe tuwa we mudhaka. Amo yo mawe mudhaka. We jiambia kitu ni wewe. Richia ujiambia kitu we nyamaza tu. Mwawe mutuki wa muyo. Una wawo dhiru wa uru dukane tikire. Na ukika kama minister addition, unajipika selfie. Mwa. Mwa. Because people will not appreciate you if you don't appreciate yourself. Every emotional slavery be delivered in Jesus' name. Amen. Lift your voice and say, every emotional captivity every emotional. by the spirit of rejection spirit. and slavery, lose me now. Lose me now! Come on, just pray, just pray. Rebo shata ba yando se beka da ha. Re shata ba gado se ba da ga so be de hu zama. Re kama no zama na so bi da na mo se beke todi. In Jesus' name, do we pray? Number four reason why families don't move forward is familiarity. When there is entitlement in families. When there is, seems to be no boundaries in families, people will never move forward. Mahali watoto na wazazi wako mabesti sana. Hiyo family ya yendere ya gimbele. It's true. The, even if you are a mother, there are boundaries you should have with your daughters. Sio kila kitu naandika wazi. Hai, stuwe mkweli. Hata kama we ni baba, kuna high five na kuna wakati wa mshipi. Hmm? Yeah. And it's not that you must be an animal, but that authority must never be watered down. Anytime there is familiarity, it always breeds contempt. And every time there is contempt, there is always a sentence and a court. How are we communicating? If you are accused of contempt of court, it is an offense by itself. I pray that you will never get familiar. Na ukiona mnazoyana na mzazi, wewe kama mtoto jiondo, na kuzoyana is not joking, is not being free. It is when you begin to cross and to begin to mess up with their rank and authority. When you water down their office, it should be within the confines of their office. Are we communicating? I pray that familiarity will not plague our families. You have realized that children that are familiar with their parents, when their parents are talking, they talk back. It's familiarity. Since I was born, I don't think, you, I, we didn't have room. <laughs> you know, I, I wish I had. To talk back to your parents when they are talking. Do you want to be dead? You would let them finish and speak everything you want. And if you realize they are high, you walk out. You wait later when they are calm. You come back and talk to them. And not defending yourself. The first word you say, I'm sorry, I was wrong. This generation, who bewitched you? Even before the parent finishes, me, mother, who's in the see me, me. My friend, <laughs> you would have lost your 32 teeth. <laughs> and then she calls your father for backup. You are dead. <laughs> if your father will not be enough, she will go announce to everybody in the village. And I encourage every parent here, let us do communal parenting. It works. <laughs> I was telling oh my, one of my daughters was asking me that because where we were going to school was far. So I said, come on, PP2, and you walk like four kilometers. How would you go home? He said, that is the rest of their concern. Everybody was a parent. There will always be a teacher who moves that route. Hata angiabia wazazi, musijari niko nao. Ukienda kukwe kuna jirani, anajulikana, anapereka nga, ngombe saa saba kukunywa maji. Huyo ndi atakuwa muzazi wa hiyo siku. 
na kuambia ukishikwa na hiyo ujinga ya kucheza kwa barabara uone miti unaokota uone mawe unaokota maji unaketi my friend atakuchapa na akusindikize na akufikishe nyumbani na aseme vile ulisem ulifanya wasn't that good parenting that's why we turned out fine we are here to squeeze you this gen <laughs> tunaonea 18 tunaonea 18 we will not allow you to be spoiled The God wants to preserve your generation. I can hear you are amen. And because you are a generation that hears. Nyinyi mko expose you hear. Sisi tulikuwa nogo. Serious, sisi. We didn't have opportunity of learning because everybody that was an adult we feared them. We were learning from our peers. So moja kitoka na gossip tunaamini what? Because our sources of information was limited. The only books we used to read is Mr. Kamau. Simon Makode, you know we had some hadiths. And we didn't have much. Right now you have social media, but never lose. Never lose. Never lose the honor you have because when familiarity comes in, the curse begins to trickle in. Open up your mouth and begin to say I repent every seed of familiarity I have ever sown in my life. I repent. Lord forgive me. 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 In the seed of familiarity I've ever sown, forgive me, Lord. Diga tiga kuga ore muega. Diga tiga kuga vega i. Maria mona o chequeira baba. Diga tiga nero. Tiga kuga ore muega Mane mone uje ke ire baba Niariga ne ona le in Jesus name and finally how, why are we not moving forward we have to talk about evil altars that are speaking in the family what is the altar that is speaking in your family Right now we have all over the world the revival of cultural altars. No wonder in most of the tribes there is a problem of alcoholism because there were altars that used to receive alcohol as a libation. Alcohol is a sacrifice. And when the people that carry the true altar of Jesus Christ have gone to sleep, these other altars begin to rise up because the earth and families are governed by altars. What governs your family is not hard to tell. If it is prayer, we will see prayer. If it is the devil, we will see strife, we will see division, we will see many other things. And every family has its challenges. But when you have a common altar where you meet, altars reconcile people. I pray that the altar of Jesus shall be lifted in our families. That is why you have the duty of an evangelist. Go and evangelize. If you can't tell them about Jesus, pray for them until they get Jesus. Finally, I have a testimony of one of us. The mom came not many days ago. She came, she's been coming just to bring a sacrifice of thanksgiving. Two, three of her children had already joined the Agekoyo altar and were very active. One of them was actually almost to be ordained as a priest. But I know one of us who is a member here. Day and night, he used to intercede for the family. She would come and he would come and so altars and tell reverend, I know that me and my mother, we are in agreement. These gods are foreign. We will not serve them. It has taken several years, but eventually the Lord prevailed. Now remember one, in one of those days, we did the, the dedication sacrifice on phone. If you remember, you, you, it's a family you know. We did on phone here. Because they are not in Kenya. We did it on phone. They raised a sacrifice and we did it. And we prayed. After we prayed, the first one that came out of that altar came got born again in a service like today. She had applied for a visa to Canada two years back and no response. 
She left here on Sunday. The following day, she got her visa to Canada. In one week, she went back to, she's now in Canada. And not only in Canada, she's a mother, yet the doctors had said she will never give birth. <laughs> the devil is a liar. If there is any evil altar governing your family, it is not going to die tomorrow, it is today. If you came with your family members, you are the most blessed. Because in this family Sunday, that is when we come with our families. Because when we are two or three and we agree, the weight is a lot. It is much more when we are, it is easier to break an altar when you are more represented. That is why when you invite them to a place like this one, it is to your good. And we are going to dedicate our families to God today. You are going to bring your vows, your altars of sacrifice. We are going to dedicate and renew every year like Shiloh. Telling God this family is in your hands. We lay down our altar again. The second thing that happened is that God has started delivering them. Finally, the one who was to become a priest has denounced those gods. And the mother came to say, I am coming. If you look at the woman that was about to die, right now she looks young. Every time she's coming, I'm not recognizing her because of what the Lord has done. You have a duty to demolish evil altars. Tell your neighbor, you have a duty to demolish evil altars. People will not serve your God until they see what your God can do. Ooh. They are not waiting for how you will brag in their family meetings. Telling them you will pray, I demolish, I bring down, I makodise. I... It's not the English. They want to see the prosperity in your life. Once they see you prosper, they will be interested. Ay. Am I communicating? But you cannot be praying the way you are praying and then you go beg them for house rent. You think they would respect your God? And they will never respect your God unless your altar is speaking. Let the altar that you have raised speak for you in Jesus' name. Are you ready to pray? Are you ready to pray? Lift up your hands and say, every sin committed in evil altars by my forefathers speaking against my life and the life of my family. Forgive me, O oh Lord. Forgive me, O oh Lord. Take a minute and ask God to forgive you. Forgive me, O oh God. We have entered into a session of prayer. So prepare yourself for prayer. If you are seated, rise up on your feet. Lord, forgive me, O oh Lord. Forgive me, O oh Lord. Forgive me, O oh Lord. Ask God to forgive you. If they sacrifice to the gods of the dead, ask God to forgive you. If they, they slaughtered gods in evil altars, ask God to forgive you. If they did sexual activities like Absalom to raise an illegitimate altar, ask God to forgive you. If they slaughtered babies, if they slaughtered human beings, you don't know what they did, but ask God to forgive you. If there is no unity in your family, know there is an altar speaking. If there are deaths in your family, know there is an altar speaking. If there is still poverty in your family, know there is an altar speaking. And they take time to demolish, but we will not give up. We came here like Hannah, ear by ear, until we see our breakthrough. Repent the sin of dishonor, the sin of murder, the sin of adultery, anything written in the Ten Commandments. Ask God to forgive you. Repent the sin against the Ten Commandments. They have, we have committed that utterance. In Jesus' name. So how do you break these curses? Let me explain them one and another again. So that you understand. And I want you to know that destroying evil altars, it sometimes it may take you a lifetime. For Gideon, he was told that go and demolish the altar that your father raised. But what you don't know is that the altar that Gideon's father had raised was not only a family altar, it was controlling the community. So sometimes you will realize that some altars are so high ranking, it will take some prolonged time of prayer. That is why year by year, keep renewing the altar. As you can, keep on praying. Deal with your foundations, don't be quiet. 
At times that you look like you're losing, but eventually you will win. Tell me, but you cannot lose when you have this God. Even if it appears like you're losing, you're not losing. It is just God re-strategizing to see how he will provide a way of escape. Because some of them, there are legal reasons why you are there. Maybe some of them killed babies for them to raise that altar. You are not there. And then you just come for them in the name of Jesus with your English. I destroyed my life. And the devil is looking at you. Do you know the, do you know the price of this altar? Ten men died in one day to raise this altar. Some of them maybe they slept with multiple virgins for the altar to be raised. And then you come further in the name of Jesus. This marriage must work. <laughs> and then you go to, you look for Kwonko and the kings. Tips on marriage. So you begin to walk like a seductress. It will not work. Oh. Deal with the altar. Tell me about deal with the altar. <laughs> you, hear, you hear motivational speakers on uh, uh, principles of prosperity. So you come here with an attitude lock. I will just drop on the altar. When you are not here, you are not here. He is willing to give hands of cows to have you cast. Because wickedness has more motivation than blessing. May you be more motivated to bring blessing in your generation. So the first way to being delivered is repentance. Any sin against the Ten Commandments brings a generational curse. So murder, adultery, worship of other gods, all those sins. And by all means, we come from a generation of people that have violated it. Because if we didn't come from a generation of people that have violated it, we would have been living better lives. But it is not over. Christ became a curse. That we may be blessed. Lift your voice one more time. Any sin that was committed against the Ten Commandments that brought a curse into my foundation, by the blood of Jesus, I cry for mercy. 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 Pray for mercy.